Good evening. This is the um, October meeting of the Community Service um, Committee of the Common Council for the City of Norwalk. We will open this meeting with the roll call. I see Councilperson Burnett, Councilperson Sutton, Councilperson Dunn, Councilperson Smith, and myself, Councilperson Ayers. Um, is there anyone online for public comment? If you wish to make a public comment, please raise your virtual hand. You will be acknowledged. State your name and your address. Uh, Madam Chair, we do have one person, Ms. Diane Loricello. I will allow her to talk. Absolutely. Ms. Loricello. Good evening, Chair uh, Ayers and uh, commission uh, committee members and staff. For the record, my name is Diane Loricella, uh, 21 Little Fox Lane. And uh, tonight I just wanted to um, speak to the item related to the ARPA um, designees. Um, I think, of course, that is a it is a terrific uh, federal uh, program and ruling by the Congress. And um, I know that uh, this particular uh, chief and committee worked uh, what I wanted to know is uh, going forward, but especially for this particular meeting, um, I wanted to know if, uh, how I could find out the list of the, I think it was 20 uh, grantees or designees for the, the ARPA item, ARPA item. Um, and going forward, Madam Chair, I wanted to know if there's a chance that there could be backup materials included in your online um, agendas. Many of the other council committees, several of them do have the backup materials in general. Um, and of course, some of the commissions, especially zoning commission has uh, extensive backup. Um, again, I, I think it would be helpful for the public to see a little bit more about what is on the agenda. And at the very least, if there's a PowerPoint presentation, which some of your guest speakers have had in the past, it would be so terrific if the public knows how they can view those um, as, as backup or I guess follow up. I don't know if that would appear in the minutes for the next month. So um, um, looking forward to hearing about the designees, but I think it would be really terrific if there is a chance we could have at least a listing of uh, the designees um, in someplace in the agenda or backup material. Thank you and have a good evening. You're on, um, you are uh, muted. I was muted, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Ms. Loricella. Is there any other person for public com um, comment? Madam Chair, there is no others. Thank you, hearing and seeing none. We will close public comment at this time. Um, I now call for the approval of the minutes from the September 18th minute, 18th meeting. Is there a motion? Mr. Sutton. Hi. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, I see four. Mr. Burnett? In favor, oppose, or abstain? Can I make a change? Sorry, I didn't get to my audio quickly enough. Um, thank you, Ms. Ayers. Um, yeah, I just on page three, um, the paragraph that begins, Ms. Smith inquired how long individuals, um, I and it states that there was no response to the question of tracking participants. Um, I did feel that there was a response to that question. Uh, Ms. Mellison, Mellinson, you know, answered the the length of of treatment, but she did address the fact that they uh, they follow the um, the students for a period of time, and um, you know, so I, I did feel that that was addressed. Okay, we will make that corrections. Thank you. Other corrections. Okay, let's try this again. All in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Oh, nope. It's unanimous. Karen, moving right along, we will now have an update from our chief, Chief Daniels. 
Thank you. Um, if, if it's okay with you, Madam Chair, I'll reserve my comments uh, during my presentation. Unfortunately, you won't be here, but uh, I will reserve it for that for that for that action item. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very much. So we are moving right along to our action items. Action, um, action item A, Health Department, authorize the Mayor Harry W. Raley to execute any and all agreements, documents, instruments, or amendments as may be necessary to extend the student practicum internship agreement between the City of Norwalk Health Department and Sacred Heart University Health Professions Program for a period of two years, ending on December 31st, 2026. Um, I see our um, director of the health department, Ms. Dia Moore. Thank you so much, Chairperson Eric. So as many of you are aware, we have several different um, agreements, affiliation agreements with academic institutions to be able to host student interns at the health department. And we've successfully been working with Sacred Heart um, over the past year. We've been able to host two student interns and we would like for this to continue. Um, we have a couple more students who are interested in and interning at the health department over the next year. So in order to do that, we just need to extend this affiliation agreement. And we're hoping to do that for two more years. Thank you. Any questions around the extension of the current agreement with the health department? Is uh, the Madam Chair, I, I'll just like to move the item. Thank you. Um, all in favor, let me see your hand. Aye. Unanimous. The action item has passed. Thank you so much. Um, I was about to say, Chief Diamore. <laughs> I appreciate all of your support. Thank you. <laughs> um, item B, Human Services. Authorize the Mayor Harry W. Railing to execute any and all agreements, documents, instruments, or amendments as may be necessary with the Elm City Village, Inc. and the House of Darla to provide vital services to high-risk youth referred to Juvenile Review Board, care coordination, and high utilize, utilizers of community services in the amount of $50,000 administered by the Human Service Department. Account noted. Um, Ms. Anna Vivian, are you coming to speak to this item? Yes, I am. Good evening, everyone. So this is a request to expand an existing contract. So currently, Elm Village works with our JRB program. And um, to David Wallencheck, the director of youth services, often says they refer their toughest customers. So Elm Village has a very particular style of mentoring. It's a highly specialized one where they recruit people with lived experiences, um, that have been able to overcome, you know, adversaries that they have faced in their lifetime and be a productive member of society. And so therefore, then they mentor the young people that are going through a similar experience. So it's a it's a unique program in the sense of the mentors have a lot of requirements for their past experience and the value that they can bring through that lived experience. And the idea would be to expand that services, not only to JRB, but to the youth that we know are falling through the cracks. We know that there's youth that are high utilizers of community services, but for whatever reason, it's not the right fit. The no-show policy is too strict. Um, you know, we recognize this with the incident that happened with youth violence recently. Everyone knew the youth. But for whatever reason, they hadn't been able to be connected. And so we're hoping if we use this specialized mentoring, that 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 outreach, that engagement piece at that level will get the youth connected um, and will be able to prevent, to the best of our abilities, further youth violence that we see happening in our city. And we've coupled House of Darla in because she she has a pro-social approach, so it complements the youth mentoring and they'll be partnering with the youth that are referred to this expansion. Any questions from my colleagues about the expansion of this program? Mm -hmm. um, I have a question if you do not mind me asking. Um, what is the target or how many young people are currently 
being served by this pro program, if you have that information. Absolutely. So it asks for year to date how many youth have gone through the existing program. And I do want to note that the first contract was for 35000 So this would be able to extend their reach much further than where it is right now. And they've been able to serve 28 youth. So seven that came from last fiscal year and five new ones that are current up to date, but 28 in total so far. Okay, 28. And so with the extension of the 50,000, is this just going to salaries or is this going to other services rendered? It'll be to salaries. So it'll be the, the hourly wage for the mentoring on both sides. So both for Elm Village and House of Darla, because of the restrictions with the ARPA funding, we'll have, if there is other needs or other um, funding needs, we'd have to figure out a different solution for those pieces. Um, but the way that it's structured, it would be funding the actual hourly need for the program. Okay. And do you know the ratio of mentor to child? It's one-on-one, -on -one. so they they provide one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't know exactly what the cap is per mentor. I'd have to get back to you with that, but I know that it's very, very low caseloads, and I can also um, testify that the executive director for Elm Village personally gets involved with pretty much every single case. He's a person with lived experience, and so it's very near and dear to his heart to make sure that the success of these children is a top priority. Um, and when I've talked to him, I think he, I don't, again, I don't want to misspeak, but I think he said it was like one to five. So it's a really, really small mentoring caseload for those that he recruits. And one last question. Sorry, but I just want to. No, no, no. Um, and so once the, the young person comes into this program, what is the anticipated amount of time do they stay with their mentor? Is it like other mentoring programs that we have in the city? They follow them through their academic school year and then grade after grade. What is the structure of this particular program? Uh, so in an effort to try to make sure that we connect as many students as we can to the appropriate level of care, there is a idea that since they're not the JRB connected youth and we're using it in a more proactive measure, that the, it'll be really intensive for the maximum of six months, but we're anticipating M Elm Village to be involved for three to four months and then House of Darla to take over for the three months remaining. Um, so in total, it would be six months, right? So if, if Elm Village has to do four months, then House of Darla would do two um, for a total of six months, depending on what the, what the need is. And it is a pilot. So we will be building the plane as we fly in a little bit and discussing the cases and what the transition looks like and the warm handoff, um, and the touch points, but it's set up for JRB for six months. And we do anticipate that it'll be similar results on, on this project. And as you noted, with some of the recent things that happened, um, are, is this program, able to follow the young person through the summer or is it just limited to the school year no 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 no. we anticipate using it through the summer so it will be a collective team that can do referrals and that's yet to be established we do plan on um you know leveraging existing meetings for this but really creating a referral process where if any youth serving organization or school or city becomes aware of a youth that's falling through the cracks, like I described, they would have the opportunity to refer them to this program. And as a community, we would track it. But no, it's not tied to the school year. So over the summer, absolutely. Okay. I've asked a whole bunch of questions. Anybody, <laughs> anybody else have any questions? <laughs> okay. Seeing and hearing none. No other questions. Um, can someone move this item? Thank you, Council Person Smith. All in favor, let me see your little hands. Aye. Okay, that is unanimous. And we thank you, um, Miss Australia, for just bringing this. I think it's going to be a wonderful program to already work on what we already have. So getting those special niche, niche children some additional services. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Have a good night. Um, at this time, I will be relinquishing my chair to the very capable, um, my colleague, Councilman Greg Burnett. Y'all have a wonderful meeting.
Night, night. Thank you, Madam Chair. And let the minutes reflect that Council Member Nicole Ayers has recluse herself and is no longer part of this meeting. We will now move to item 5C under Chief of Community Services, which and uh, well, hopefully you can still, can you still hear me? Yes, yes, we still hear Okay, you. good, thank you. Um, oh, I, oh, he put up his uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, the, the item reads as follows. Authorize Mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute any and all necessary agreements, documents, instruments, or amendments with the selected nonprofit organizations as outlined in the final upper nonprofit grant allocations report in the amount of $700,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds to 20 nonprofit organizations to support their recovery efforts and continued service to the NOAA community as administered by the Community Services Department. Funding source ARPA account number as noted for the amount of $400,000 and account noted for $300,000. Do we have a motion on this item? Council I'll Member move. Barbara Smith, thank you. Um, and we will now turn the floor over to Chief Daniels. You now have the floor for discussion. Thank you very much and good evening. And thank you again. I really appreciate um, your, your approval of the uh, past two items. So I mentioned to Chair Ayers, you know, I do have a couple of brief remarks before I get into the slide deck. Uh, Councilman Burnett, I, you said you're on your phone, but are you able to see it? Yes, I can see it. Awesome, Very clear. great. No problem. Great. So I just want to, you know, always like to connect the dots that I want to thank you all for your support that a month ago we held the Youth Mental Health Gap Analysis press conference. And as those that participated, you saw many... Uh, providers and supporters that were at the press conference uh, to to really look at the, the 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 mental health needs of our young people, and I look forward uh, at, by the close of the year and beginning of the year to report back to first to this group and potentially maybe do a presentation for the larger body to talk about the results and how we as the city is really looking to uh, support young people as it relates to mental health. So just want to say thank you for that. But for the purpose of this action item, I do have a few slides um, that I want to talk to you about regarding, um, I'm actually using two screens, so make sure I'm doing it right. Good, great. Um, that uh, that we are, this is, this is our last round. Uh, this is the last round of ARPA dollars that has been stewarded by the Community Services Department. Uh, for over the past three years, my department uh, steward $2.9 million to nonprofits to help them during their pandemic recovery. And I wanted to highlight uh, to you all that maybe about a month or two ago, maybe about a month ago, I shared with the larger body uh, a report around how we use those funds over the three years. I could definitely send it again, but it was made about a month ago uh, to your city email. So I would really encourage you all to take a look at that so you can see how the funds were thoughtfully stewarded to really identify the needs and get it out to the nonprofits who really are on the ground serving our community. So through this last funding, uh, we, were, we were allotted $700,000 in funding to support our local nonprofits across our city. A total of 20 nonprofit organizations have been selected for funding. Uh, this is important because we originally were allocated 400,000. And as you recall, uh, through, through state funding, and I believe uh, Senator Bob Duff helped facilitate it that the city receive additional funds. And so um, through Mayor Rillen, uh, uh, I was able to get additional funds and that's what created the 700,000. So that's why you'll see in the action item, 400,000 from the existing ARPAN dollars that we had, and then the new funding that came in, uh, we had $700,000. So that really gave us an opportunity to really fund 
uh, nonprofits across a, 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 a across across sector around the variety of uh, services that they provide. And so I just want to just highlight a little bit our scoring methodology. You know, so the, the individuals were scored. So what we used was a high scoring. High scorers received a proportion. Wait, let me let me backtrack because I'm looking at two screens. I'm getting a little confused. Uh, so th those that received high scores received a larger allocation. And then we also factored in how much they received. So the calculation uh, was 60-40. And so and we call it a hybrid model. So organizations were evaluated based on their submitted application. 60% of the allocation was tied to the evaluation score. And then 40% was proportionally given by the requested funds. And again, we were able to do this because we had more money to distribute, which I would say is a good thing. Uh, and this balanced the need of equitable distribution while also prioritizing organizations with the highest potential uh, uh, impact in the community. We, we, um, for those that don't know, um, the city does not review them you know, in isolation. We identify uh, seasoned professionals in, in, in nonprofit uh, in, in nonprofit disciplines to help support that. We vetted them, you know, making sure there's no biases and so forth. So this just speaks to that. And um, the, the guidelines was focused on the pandemic challenges because again, this is ARPA dollars. So each application, each applicant had to identify their reasoning of how they were impacted uh, for uh, COVID. And then the reviewer's job was to score them. We looked at our methodology. Of course, my department facilitated the process. And we're really excited that all 20 organizations were able to receive some funding. So in our final, so in conclusion, um, this, this is the final round of American Rescue Plan Act dollars. As you all know that uh, through the federal government, we have been asked to contract these funds before the close of the year. And so we also met our deadline. Uh, if you don't use it, they take it. And then um, distributing funds, again, we're getting it back to the nonprofits that do the heavy lifting every day, uh, working from our, our seniors, our children, um, uh, we have, and, and, and food insecurity programs and the like. And I'm gonna share uh, the funding allocation to you. And then obviously this will be made available uh, for Common Council. I just wanted to point out that because this was a grant funding application, we don't put it out there because our information is public record. So once we present it to committee, it will certainly be served as an addendum for the Common Council because those nonprofits who are watching today, they're going to know today uh, whether or not they receive funding today as well, pending the Common Council vote. And so I just want to say again, thank you to the mayor, uh, to you, Common Council, and all those has been involved. Uh, we had different reviewers uh, two years ago. Uh, this was definitely a collaborative, a very thoughtful, a very, um, you know, a very serious process. Uh, as we steward federal taxpayers' dollars to make sure it's getting out to the organizations. So drum roll, please. Um, so this is the distribution um, of, of how funding, how we fund, how, uh, this is distribution of the funding categories. So you can see, again, our number is 20. So three, three organizations um, are, are, are food security, economic development, we also have an additional other three organizations that uh, fall under the early childhood family care. Uh, we also funded organizations that uh, dealt with housing stability and home prevention in our city. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited about, um, we were able to uh, elevate and uh, and they also applied uh, senior support and assisted services. Again, the idea was looking at our most vulnerable and as long as they apply, they could be considered for funding. And uh, we, we talk about this a lot, mental health and counseling services uh, for organizations and then youth programs. So I think, as, I hope that you all see that, you know, we, we really, this 700,000 uh, was is really, you know, looked at, you know, from, a, from a, a broad scope of trying to hit every every sector, every, every support to the extent that those that apply. Um, and just as a caveat, we, we promoted both on our social media those of you know that I do a bi-weekly Friday call, we have 70 to 80. So we use our social media platforms and our, our own networks to get the word out. So, but again, 20 organizations did apply. Our funding, our funding allocation, so 34.6% of the funds 
uh, or will be used for a youth program, just to break down a percentage of funding, 14% uh, for our senior services, 25% uh, mental health services. That always seems to be one of the big issues. 6.3% uh, of dollars will, is, is dedicated uh, through this through this allocation to housing stability. 9% uh, is dedicated to food security and then early childhood and family care is dedicated, 10% is dedicated. And then lastly, um, you know, how, you know, we're looking at um, this chart, the average allocation uh, is $35,000. We did ask organizations uh, to, uh, the cap was 50,000. So you can ask for no more than 50,000. But again, based on this chart, the average allocation was 35. And you'll see that no one received the entire 50,000, that 50,000 based on score, based on allocation, based on funding that was allotted. So youth program has received the highest 242, our senior services, meaning organizations. This is the compilation of the funding geared to that particular category through the organizations. Uh, mental health and counseling, 175, housing stability, 44,000. And I wanted to mention that, you know, as you all know, I think maybe a month or two ago, you know, Norwalk Open Door is the dedicated or one of the, the dedicated. So, you know, they didn't apply. You know, we really work with our nonprofits to say, let's try to, you know, be creative and strategically to help other organizations that, you know, homeless may not be their main uh, uh, work, but they also do some homeless. So we, 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 we met with, I met with partners to really think about how to best use it. We're not duplicating. You know, you're not digging in the pot more and more, you know, to try to be fair and equitable because quite honestly, you know, that that was shared in other processes. So we do take uh, a ref and reflect on what has been said or shared in the past and try to respond in a meaningful way to, with the main goal of uh, getting the money to these nonprofits to help our constituents. And then food security, 65,000 and early childhood is 72,000. And so this is another slide that just talks about what organizations requested and then what was their final allocation. And, you know, for sake of time, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because we have a couple more slides. But you can just see, again, being very thoughtful. Uh, and, 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 and I just want to point out at the bottom two, for example, like the Rowan and Norwood Community College. Yeah, they received what they because they had high scores. Based on the hybrid model, we were able to fund them after 20 and 10, but you, and, and so did Horizons at Connecticut State. But you can see how what well, you know a lot of them requested 50,000, and we just couldn't provide the whole 50. But really, was thoughtful based on their score and the hybrid model to uh, to to support as many as possible. And and these are the organizations. So these are the organizations to the left. Um, I mean, you can, t I don't know if you want me to go through everything, but, you know, you'll see all our kin receive 45,800. And then, and, and, and then you, you are able to see, and we will provide this for the packet that would go for the, uh, for the common council for your vote. Uh, but you can see uh, the organizations, uh, what, what, how the funding is going to be used. And again, it was all vetted. Uh, there was a, a, a score rubric, book, a whole process that we do using best practices. We have our colleagues, from Fairfield County Community Foundation that has weighed into all of our processes to really get us to a very good model and approach that should we have these opportunities again, we have a template uh, to use uh, uh, here, here, here in the city to get out funds. And so all our Ken Catholic Charities, uh, these are organizations, uh, Family, Children and Agency, and, and even some of the organizations that may be familiar, what we encourage them is that if you receive money in the past, um, are, are there other that you would you would want to consider? And 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 you know, these are, and then some of them we haven't we this do this process through ARPA over the past few years. We, they have not received money, so it's a mixture of both very familiar organizations, um, uh, but all, but looking at different programs, but also new programs. I mean, I'm really excited that we're going to be use funding for uh, a pregnancy program for women who are working to get sober, and that's right here in Norwalk. I didn't know about that. So we're really, uh, really excited about the, the variety of how funding uh, uh, is being used. Norwalk Housing Authority, our person to person, uh, other organizations. Um, and just, just we really, we really want to thank you and, and have the opportunity to lead uh, this work uh, to support um, these organizations through, through this process. It's just been um, a privilege and an honor. 
And so today, um, you know, I'm requesting that the Common Council through this committee authorize the final allocation of this funding, uh, American Rescue Plan, as outlined in this presentation for approval of the distribution of these 20 nonprofits. I think uh, Councilman Burnett has already read the specific action item. And with that said, I'll stop sharing my screen and uh, entertain any questions that you all may have. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time and uh, letting me uh, present to you tonight. Thank, thank you, Chief Daniels, uh, for the very detailed, clear, and um, uh, very um, precise presentation. Um, this is very helpful. And uh, uh, if we have any questions, I see that Council Member Barbara Smith has her hand raised. Uh, thank you, Council Member Burnett. Um, yeah, I really just want to express my thanks to um, our State Senator Bob Duff. Uh, for working so hard to get us this additional funding and to the mayor for assigning more funding to community services. You know, Lamond, very well that I am always advocating with him for more funding <laughs> for community services because, you know, our, the, the, the people who are in need, um, you know, it's the most important thing we do is take care of our people. And so I, I just want to express my, my gratitude that uh, you were able to fund more um, of the nonprofits than you might have. And, and I think that, uh, you know, as always, you know, you, you do this with a plum and professionalism and, um, you know, it looks like you, you, you tweaked some, some of the process, which was really, really well done. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Smith. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, I'd just like to thank Chief Daniels and his team for uh, uh, taking us from A to Z in terms of, uh, you know, X number of years ago, we did not have a, I'll say, a specific process. And now we have a very beyond credible process in terms of how we distribute dollars to our nonprofit organizations. And based upon uh, the organizations that have applied, you can see the impact of these dollars in so many different sectors of the nonprofit community that's going to help so many Norwalk residents. So again, thank you for all your efforts in, in building the process and, and also uh, ensuring that the dollars are distributed in such a way that the, the level of impact, positive impact I want to emphasize will be widespread across all of all of Norwalk residents. So, uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you, sir. Um, with that, um, if there's no other comments or questions, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, show by a raise a hand or a verbal aye, and I'm an uh, an aye. And I see Heather also. Thank you. Thank you. So. That makes it is unanimous. So this item will move forward to the full common council at the next council meeting on Tuesday, the 20, help me, the 22nd, I believe. Correct. Uh, 22nd. Yes, thank you. The 22nd for final review and approval. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, with that, we move on to item uh six on the agenda which is adjournment um do we have a motion to adjourn council member barbara smith thank you very much all those in favor and all hands are up we stand adjourned thank you so much thank have you again a great rest of the thank evening thank you good night thank you again